I'm all set. All right, good evening, everybody. Is anybody here new for the first time? Hey, Paul. We have a few. We've got uh, Jessica and Rev Reverend Lori Nevin. Yes. Uh, anyone else? Well, basically, all right. Well, let's just. Uh, well, welcome, first of all. But you have you've been introduced to this idea of non-duality, yes? yes. All right. So we're gonna just take it by the definition of the two words, yeah. Which is not non is not two. So basically, really non-duality is negation of duality. Basically, yeah. There is no non-duality. And there's really no duality, <laughs> actually. But we sure think and perceive and uh, live an interpretation of a dualistic event. Yeah. So, and uh, the singular locale we feel we're in, which is the body, is really uh, an activity of subject objectness. Yes disguised by a singularity of the body. So we think there's one thing called Paul because it's the body is used to represent Paul, but Pauling is a lot of different uh, movements. Yeah, so Paul, sometimes Paul is an object that's thought about, sometimes Paul is the subject that's doing all the thinking. Yes, so this subject objectness is what non-duality is negating. It's not Play, it's not exchanging anything with it. It's not, uh, uh, you know, turning around and starting to look for something else. It's just to sit with the negation of what we've assumed to be true yeah, and see what happens. So the message or uh, of this is premised on the idea that you are what you're looking for, but not as the you that's looking. Yes, but you are what you're looking for. Yeah, so that's the assumption that goes along with the negation. So uh, the seeker is the sort, what, what's looking is what you're looking for. A great Zen master, Hoang Po, uh, one, of his, one of my favorite statements of him that he was uh, sharing at a group, he basically looked at everyone in the group and he said, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use mind, big mind, to seek mind. You can't use light to seek light. So obviously, Hoang Po was seeing everyone as the Buddha, light, and mind. Yeah. Or why would he say that? Yeah. If it, if he was seeing everyone as Paul and Jim and Sue, he would have said, "Well, Sue is whatever." Or but he didn't. He he talked not to Sue but through Sue. Yeah. In other words, the idea of Sue is the obscuring of the message. Yeah. How it obscures the message is this is the claiming of being the one who heard the message. Yeah. So basically, the message tonight isn't directed to, let's say, Jessica or to Karen or from Paul. It's through Paul and it goes through Karen. Yeah. With the hopes that it will land or be or will, yeah, will basically land on everywhere, which means you can't really miss, yeah? So you can't miss the message. You just have to know how to overwhelm the system that wants to claim to be the hearer of the message. That's how we do it here. So there's a negation of that idea based on the, uh, on the idea of duality, based on the assumption that we are something or really we are nothing and and not of this something we're taking ourselves to be. So there's the assumption, and then there's the negation of the false assumption, which is there's Paul, and Paul is the doer, the thinker, the feeler, the taster, the toucher, the seer, the haver, the loser, yeah? Paul is like the beginning and the end. Paul is this and that, yeah? So it's a negation of that based on the assumption, the true assumption that you are what you're looking for. Yeah. 
So then what would come under question if you entertain the possibility you are what you're looking for, then who the hell is looking for it? Yeah, that would probably be the basic question that would arise. If you are what you're looking for, then who the hell is looking for it? It can't be you because you are what you're looking for. So it must be an activity that's something that is not of you, that's looking for you as an object to it as a false subject, so to speak, yeah? So we're hoping to find the real Paul from a false Paul when there ain't a Paul. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. So non-duality, not duality too. If you, if you don't have a sense of duality, uh, you will if you come to a couple of talks because basically it's subject, object, you know, this or that, close, far, male, female, yes, no, night, day. There's these, there seems to be uh, ends of poles, sort of like the idea there's, all there is is seeing, yet the mental interpretation is see or seen, yeah? So seeing is claimed with a, by a dualistic programming and therefore what's seen in the seeing is a seer and a seen, yeah? That's duality. So basically non-duality is a negation of all that. So what happens? Well, you hear the message, uh, you see what tries to make it something to fit the programming itself, you see that you're not that, and then you see the futility of trying to get what you are and trying to find what was never lost, yeah? And so, uh, a very hallelujah, hallelujah uh, futility arises. You just realize I've been left with my own devices. I can never get this. And you know what? They're not my own devices. Yeah. <laughs> and they're Bama. Then you may think you forgot, which isn't true, because you think you need to remember, which isn't true. And therefore you come here to uh, be reminded of something you never forgot, basically. And there you go. Yeah. And that's what we do uh, every week. So seemingly anyway. So if you want to have, and this is just coming from observation and reflection on what was observed. So the movement of the mental state, which is that which is manufacturing this story of being the one, yeah? The movement of the mental state is it claims whatever it's brought into contact with by consciousness, yeah? So consciousness is what's happening. The mental state arises. Whatever consciousness has brought us into contact with, it claims that to imply there's a one that was brought into contact with it, yes? So now you become a verifiable thing that's demonstrating all these attributes of nothingness and that the thing is the source of the nothing instead of the other way around where all there is is nothing and there's the appearances of things, yeah? So basically we got everything asked backwards and it's not so much... Uh, the things that are, are lining up ass backwards, it's our relationship to everything that puts them ass backwards, yes? We're the obscuring. We're not, but what we're taking ourselves to be is the acti activity obscuring what we are from what we are, yeah? So when you call off the search, you usually find what you are looking for and when you find what you were looking for, you realize it was never lost, yeah? And therefore you realize what I've been involved with here is a dreaming. I've dream I'm, I'm in a dreaming that something that can't be forgotten has been forgotten, something that can't be lost may be able to be found. And so all these absurd ideas come up and they start gaining traction. Like there's an idea that we can be out of the moment, so now, it's a huge enterprise and a business con conglomerate of how to get into the moment. But it's all predicated on an insane idea that you could be out of the moment. Yeah? Yeah? So this whole point, this whole, so this whole point is a way to escape what you're in. It's recognizing you were never in that which you want to escape from. Yeah? 
That's what it is. So this isn't like, oh, I'm going to further your desire and your drive to be liberated. No, you lose all interest in being liberated. That's the liberation because you're not that which needs to be liberated. You're not. Yeah, you're living as someone else, basically. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when that hits you, things change with no thought or effort. You're not trying to change anything. You just observe a lot of shit changes. Yeah. And so basically you don't waste another second looking for what can't be found. And so you realize you are what's looking. Yeah. <laughs> and that definitely uh, causes a great a great diminishing of looking for, <laughs> yeah. especially looking for what's looking. That will be finitoed. <laughs> you may look for a coffee or some pants, or every day I look for my keys, which I think I have lost, but they've just been misplaced, really. And I, can, I look for a lot of shit, but I'm never looking for what's looking. <laughs> Like it or not, I am that, yeah. And you wanna know it, why not just realize, what is it that wants to know it isn't you? Because you are it, yeah? What you are has no interest in knowing what you are. It's completely interested in being what it is. It has no interest in knowing what it is, yeah? (laughs) Only some crazy idea that we're something else would be incredibly interested wanting to, it would be incredibly interested in wanting to know what we are really yeah so this is the uh premise of the the meetings the first movement of the mental state is claiming uh you can capture the act of all the mental states and they're not all of them but let's say interpretation of perceptions memories thoughts they're always in the act of being identified as a thing, a long lasting, independent, separate entity that's been anointed as a very, very special you and is called me, yeah, which separates us from all the other yous <laughs> only in the in the in the flimsiest of fabrication. So and now <laughs> So there's a, when you're remembered, how are you remembered in the head? When you, when there's a memory of you, how are you pictured as a body? Yes. When you're being thought about in the future, what's being thought about as you, a body? Yeah. Do you need to hear any more? Uh, Again, the great master Hoang Po says, Whatever can be perceived, a body, yes? You're perceiving this body, I'm perceiving these bodies. Whatever can be perceived, now listen to this. Whatever can be perceived can't be perceiving. Yes? Now, take that while you're here listening to the thoughts, the little narration in one's head. Is the narration based on that revelation or is it based on what is perceiving can be perceived. Which one? The whole narration that we listen to seemingly with great devotion, mostly every day, the premise of the whole narration is what can be perceived is what's perceiving. Paul. (laughs) Paul is the seer, the hearer, the feeler, the taster, the toucher. Is that so or not? So if it isn't so, what are you listening to all day? False evidence, yes? And is that false evidence appearing real? It sure seems like it. How does it constantly keep appearing appearing to be real? It must be appearing to be real to false evidence. A mistaken identity is the false evidence that's seeing a lot of other false evidence as appearing to be real. This is why we listen all day to this narration. Yeah, (laughs) we it's not a we just it's attention and interest is sort of enslaved to the story of Paul. Yeah, (laughs) it's not enslaved to the story of Sue unless I'm a Sue. Yeah, 
or maybe it's a little bit enslaved if I went out with her, Sue, and, wa and I want to be right about her leaving me or something. Then, yes, I may pay attention to some of Sue shit. But basically, it's it has to have the flavor of Paul to be so intoxicating. What is that but an addiction? Yeah? What else could you call it? If I saw the same thoughts that grab my attention every day as Stanley's, my attention would go somewhere else. Yeah? So it's not the thoughts that are so intoxicating. It's the idea they're about Paul or it's Paul that's having them. Yeah? Take your own diagnosis. Why not? You don't have to go to a... You have your own exit ray room right here. Just... We give you a basic understanding, a pl look at your x-ray, see if, oh yeah, that rib is out. The heart should be over here. You know, it will be, you won't need to have someone tell you it. You'll see it for yourself, yeah? Yeah, and then what happens? Find out, yeah, find out, yeah? Find out, maybe, if truth is delivered to truth, it's a pretty powerful combination, yeah? Because most of us are making shit out of nothing. We're, co we're, we're believing in something that's not so. Can you imagine if that ability to make shit that's not so seem to be so was put into what's really so? It would have a powerful effect, don't you think? We're going to give meaning to something anyway. You might as well be directed to give meaning to something that's worthy of a meaning, yeah? Which is everything always at all time, right where you are. Yeah. So, the thoughts, the feelings, the actions aren't really that important. It's the idea of being the thinker, the feeler, and the actor. That's where the bondage lies, yes? You could be bonded to self in heaven or hell. It doesn't matter, really. Yeah. If you thought you were in heaven, that would be the bondage of self. If you thought you were in hell, that would be the bondage of self. That's the bondage of self before heaven and hell. Yeah. The bondage of self isn't based on where you are or where you're not. It's based on it's you that seems to be there, yeah? Wherever you are, yeah? So changing your locale, <laughs> we've realized it. I remember, you know, there's a, there's a town in, in the east, uh, the South Bay here in San Francisco called Burlingame. If you live here, you would understand the joke, but... So I, I leave Burlingame, I go to Thailand, and in a couple of months, Thailand seems like Burlingame again. Why is that? Because I'm there. <laughs> we don't see, we're the biggest meaning of all the meanings we are trying to change all the time. We're the biggest overriding meaning. The biggest meaning about a problem is the one who has the problem, obviously, yeah? Lose interest in the one who has the problem, and you'll immediately find you have an ability to travel lighter through all the problems life has in store for you. Yeah, you will. Because now they're not, they won't be your problems. <laughs> Were they ever your problems? No. So it's easy to go back to what was already there. They were never your problems. It's not like you're negating something that was true. You're just telling the truth about something that is false. Yeah? There has no one has had a problem. Actually, it's more like the problem had you, isn't it? Really? Like people always talk about, oh, I had a resentment for 40 years. No, the resentment had you for 40 years. You didn't have the resentment. The resentment had you. How do you know that? Because you say you had the resentment. <laughs> That's the bondage of self. So, yeah. All right. I hope uh, this hasn't made anything clearer, really. Yeah. So, all right. You want to open the squares? Uh, yes. Anybody want to raise their hand?
I thought that was a very clear statement. You, you, it's easy to go back to what was always so. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to furnish it. <laughs> it's. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is great. No one has a question. Fantastic. James, our friend James is back. Go ahead, James. James is back. I didn't know you got it was gone. Oh, I meant Lebowski, but actually there's two. Oh, James. Lebowski. Maybe, might be two. I think this is uh, James from. Uh, I forget where you're from, James. But go ahead, James. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Oh, I was just a simple. Yeah, yeah James, New Zealand. Uh, you're way past your qu quota for questions, James, but because I like right. I'll let you have another one. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you, you touched on my question, basically. It's, it's that it seems that this is like a practice to remember. That's all. No. Nope, it's not a practice to remember. It's more a forgetting of self, not a remembering of the truth. Yeah. Okay. You forget, okay. You forget what you're not, which is easy to do <laughs> because you're not that. And then there's, <laughs> there's no need to remember what always is. Yes. Right. Yeah. So this isn't a way to remember what you are. It's, it's, when you recognize or get an understanding that which you've taken to imply you, there's no you to be implied, you lose interest in all that which is being used to imply it. Yeah. You lose interest in the selfing. So in other words, there's a big difference between hearing and listening. Yeah. So you're right. hearing selfing because, uh, you know, there's consciousness, but there's not an interest or you're not, that interested in it anymore. So you're not listening to it much, but you're still hearing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's no you hearing it. There's a hearing of it. Yeah. So you don't remember what you are because that you never forgot basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the remembering and the forgetting is about what you're not really. Yeah. What you're not believes it can forget something. And then it also gives it the power to remember something, but you, that doesn't work with what always is tell you the truth. Yeah. Right. <laughs> duality can play the tune, but what non duality is doesn't follow that dance step. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. It just seems that uh, there's a working towards it. That's all. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, it can appear that way because you're seeing it through the lens of, uh, you know, Paul. Yes. You're, you're right. still seeing stuff through that lens. And that lens has time and space as part of how it focuses, which is a distortion completely. But yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you know that you. seeing cool. yeah seeing uh reacted to in time and space is called looking we think we're looking yeah right. as if we have we're looking and we cannot look seeing it yeah seeing is uh, do you see the seeing is what's is the awareness is just is yes right then you add a little pepper and salt which is like time and space and now a mental reaction to the seeing it calls it looking yeah and so right. now looking 
has a little flavor of time, doesn't it? You ever feel it? Seeing is like gazing, so to speak. You're just, or more like a panoramic view. You're not rushing something out of the, out of the scene or bringing something into the scene. It's just panoramic sort of, but looking has an intent in it. There's something, there's a movement in that. And that movement is what's distorting the seeing so that we're using the seeing to look for itself. <laughs> so all we need to do is have the looking or that which comprises the looking negated, and then you'll realize all there is is seeing. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't realize all there is is seeing through looking. The looking gets negated. In other words, the emperor the clothes are, are, are it's you see through the clothes and all that all that looking is just what's seen <laughs> being distorted by an interpretation yes right so therefore what's looking is actually what you're looking for but it's not called who's looking it's not paul you're looking for it's what's looking is seeing <laughs> that's what's looking seeing is what's looking <laughs> <laughs> seeing in time is looking yeah right. when seeing is moved through time it's looking we're using seeing infected with time and we call it paul looking we don't realize it's seeing yeah yeah <laughs> that's why you can't use the seeing to find the seeing yeah because that's the seeing. <laughs> that's why you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use mind to seek mind. You can't use light to seek light. Why not? Well, because you're the Buddha. You're the mind. You're the light. <laughs> that's why. If you were something else, you could use maybe the Buddha or let's say Buddhism to find or acquire some attributes you thought the historical Buddha had, yeah? So you practice Buddhism to try to get equanimity or whatever it is. It makes complete sense. But if you're the Buddha, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. That's the joke that hits you all at once, yeah? You realize that's exactly what been, I've been doing. I've been using the Buddha to look for the Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm guilty. There you go. <laughs> That's why we say it. I don't want you to try to understand it. I want you to hear it and see what it does. Yeah. Does it explain a lot to you? Does the statement, if you have a background of recovery, does the statement self can't get out of self explain a lot to you? If it does, yeah, you're ripe, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's why you... I just, just give me your, your take on this. Let's say there's 500 people and Hoang Po walks in. And 500 people are 500 different locations on 500 different uh, pillows and 500 different names. And then Hoang Po looks at them and says to all of them, hey, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Yeah, you can't use mind to seek the mind. You can't use light to seek the light. Who would he say that to? Or what would he say that to other than Buddha, mind, and light? Uh, what's... It would have been completely inappropriate to say that to 500 different, long-lasting, independent, separate things. He didn't see the 500 independent. He may have been seeing them, but he didn't see them. Yeah? He saw Buddha, mind and light. And he was probably under the strong suspicion that the Buddha wasn't seeing it as self as Buddha. It was seeing itself as Steve. So we try to talk through Steve to the Buddha by saying, not to Steve, but to the Buddha, you can't use yourself to find yourself. Yeah? Right. End of story. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's call off, have some tea, make some rice, fucking do something. Yeah?
why we have to sit for 30 hours going over it? It's an invitation. It either, it either goes to Steve or it gets to the Buddha, one or the other. If it goes to Steve, keep coming back. And one of these times, it's going to get to the Buddha. It is. Yeah. And it's going to reverberate through the skin of Steve. And then you'll watch Steve arise and go, I'm feeling a reverberation. No, there was no Steve feeling fucking anything. There was a reverberation. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And hopefully, all right, now you've caught the person that says they're the master of the house constantly sneaking in the back door. Yeah? What happens? Find out. Yeah? That's the right. fun of it. Yeah? Do you think you're going to get to an authentic understanding by reading books? No. What you read has to let it take it, let it lift off the page and circulate in your little blood system. Let it tell you. It's got it's got a seed of understanding pregnant in it. That's why the greatest deliveries of the message are usually one sentence or less. They're very very sharp and quick. Yeah, because they doesn't you don't need much. Yeah, how much do you need? to get the message to a lion that it's a lion, not much. You just got to get through the thick skin of the sheep. Yeah. I'm still using every statement I use at these talks created avalanches in me over the years. That's why I like the I like the sound and the movement of an avalanche. That's why I use them every week. <laughs> they produce a sense feltness of, of of inescapable hugeness. Yeah, all encompassing net. There's not one part of me that escaped that statement. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Not one part of me. Yeah, the whole fish got caught. <laughs> That's the joy of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fucking joy of it. Because what you catch, what you notice isn't you. That's the beauty of it. And then you realize all of the fending of it is all the system within the system. Yeah. There's no you to be found in it. You're like just a giant whatever space, let's say. Yeah. You don't turn into a form and then incriminate the other form for being a fuck up. That's not the way it goes. That's the thief policeman situation. You're neither of those. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, James. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paul. John R. Yeah, hey. Uh, hey, Paul. Just uh, thank you very much for the shares and thanks, Mike, for Is this John being here. Uh, John Reed? Can you hear me? John yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to take care of that, John. I'm going to send your inf that that thing yes, about that little retreat. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, no worries. But the question's not really relating to that. So moving no, on. I just wanted to tell you because I was, I've been lax at getting back with you. Yeah, it's okay. I haven't looked anyway. Um, physical pain. Uh, I'm struggling, have been for a decade, maybe 15 years with uh, spinal stuff, got run over like you, that kind of mm. stuff. How do you cope with that? I mean, I'm at a point here where I'm trying to get surgery, which is really the, the last choice. Um, but I'm finding myself in a situation where my prescription is of an opiate. And, um, you know, due to history... I know that's not a good game and uh, and or THC, which is um, my favorite, you know, um, so I'm in a bit of a conundrum. And what do you, what, have you got any opinions or something you could? Well, that would be something I would take the lid off that for me. To, uh, it would be better for you to get my information from Mike and we can talk personally about that. But the idea of pain. Right. Okay. The idea of pain, uh, 
has a, a close cousin, a close mental cousin called suffering, yes? Yeah. So there's the physical pain. There's, let's say, a chronic condition. And then there's the reaction to it. And the reaction to it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. A whole lot of weight there. Now, you may not be able to get yeah. out of the circumstances of the physical pain, but there is a strong possibility you can travel much lighter through the suffering. Yeah, I'm, I'm just finding that I, John is angry now. I'm angry. It's, yeah. um, it's slowing down, you know, any physical stuff, and uh, I'm not happy about that. And then, yeah, and then, then you could proceed that with a question well who is that johnny yeah i hear you i hear you yeah. and then just sit with that and of course the head will say well that's not doing anything we'll ask who is it that thinks it's not doing anything and just you don't have to do it a lot just pull the rug out from underneath it a few times yeah and then there uh because it's a it's an assumption our not questioning it gives it its legs, so to speak. Yeah. 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 So why not throw that in there? Because uh, I have chronic conditions. Uh, yeah. I know yeah. that is a bit, really, in a lot of ways. I've, I got run over like you a couple of times. And it's produced, you know, as a physical influence, it's been on me ever since I got run over. Yeah. Like, every yeah. day. <laughs> defined a lot of my physical life but i'll yeah. tell you uh, my first reaction to it when i went back and started using again was to avoid it at all costs and disassociate completely that didn't work out that well and then yeah. uh, over time i've never taken much for it but i really found that i was traveling a lot lighter through it when it wasn't seen as my pain and stuff yeah. Okay. He wasn't trying to negate the pain with a mental story. No, it was more of an acceptance of the pain. I was questioning, is it mine or not? Yeah. Yeah. Because I see, you know, we all have experiential destinies. Yeah. Some of us get severely damaged some way or another. And that's the seat assignment. That's the, that's, that's the event or the ride, if you want to call it. But the identification as the one who's having it plays such a huge role in the continuation of suffering. Yes. Yeah. I think we lost them, but. And if he wants you, to, oh, we can. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I muted myself. Um, I, I guess there's two parts. You know, a, a, you know, perfect example of the duality. There is an acceptance of what's happening at some level, but you know, as I say, there, there's a um, the physical person or or you know belief system is not happy about the restrictions that are being imposed. Um, but as you say, you know, I, 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 there is acceptance beneath that. Um, it's a bit like if you got your, you know, you talk about the Toyota as the means of, motiv of mobility. You know, this Toyota needs a new gearbox or something. Yes. And, um, yeah, I, 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 um, I know what it's like, definitely. But yeah, some anyway. Things you have to figure stuff around the circumstance, like we say in recovery instead of trying to fit them around you. I mean, I've, I've had to give up a lot of things I've loved in this life. And, uh, I'm fine with it, so to speak. You know, I'm grateful for the opportunities I've had to do what I've done. And some yeah. of them don't do it anymore. So, yeah. Thank you uh, very much. Thanks again for your help. Thank you. Yeah, bro. Ciao. That was a cool sound. That was like the universal toilet just went off. Oops. No, 
Okay, yeah, and I was on mute. So <laughs> wow. thanks, John and Ryan S. Go ahead. Hey, Paul. Uh, my first time uh, to one of these get together. So good to be here. I'm actually here in the Bay Area. <clears throat> so look forward to hopefully when things get back to uh, some kind of normalcy, if you do in person get together, that'd be awesome. <clears throat> but uh, I have a question for you. Um, uh, and I, I think I know the answer to it. But <clears throat> you mentioned thinking, feeling and acting, and not thinking that you're the thinker, that you're the feeler, and you're the actor. Now, I'm, <clears throat> I'm also in a 12-step program and talking about God consciousness and, you know, underneath all the calamity, the pomp, the worship of other things is the fundamental idea of God. Is that what we're talking about here is that the God within? Well, first of all, I want to say, you're never going to think yourself out of being the thinker. <laughs> so it's not like thinking that you're not the thinker, that it doesn't go that way. You just, there's a seeing of it. And wh however word, whatever word structure you want to use, which is a reaction to a hit, so to speak, it's fine. If you want to speak of it in AA terms, it could be the innermost or the higher power or whatever. Yeah. Okay, great. And are your teachings um, from like the Dzogchen lineage or anything? Uh, they're from back? the Rockville Center lineage. What's that? Rockville Center, Long Island lineage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it's not from. a very long lineage, but it's quite insightful. No, no. I don't know. I, uh, I picked up a lot of things here and there but I never picked up the things I picked up the things at, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. But you're here in the Bay area, right? Yeah. I'm in the Bay area. I live up in Novato. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. We, we, uh, again, if you talk to Mike after the meeting, the, the guy that's holding the platform, we get together every once in a while. We, I have a okay. huge one in the back. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you all to be here. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm just, I'm unmuted. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Skyler. Okie dokie. Hello. Um, so this isn't exact. Where did you go? Do do do. Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, this isn't exactly a question, but I just had to tell you. I really liked your joke, I mean, not joke, but your comment about Sue, because um, I just saw Sue and I could not stop laughing. I was looking at her and it was like the smile came up and then Sue started going like this and then I started going like this to hold it in and it happened like four times back and forth and like I stayed up late for this meeting because I just had to because ever since the stretching of the shirt comment self was in like a tiny little boy's shirt and just like I'm hearing it actually like there's no coincidences yes. and I'm loving laughing with you so thank you well good we'll have more of it I hope oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good deal. Yes. <laughs> Stretching of the, the shirt. Yes. Yeah. You try to say something thousands of different ways. Yeah. You're attempting to sort of provoke an image that, that uh, triggers a sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. So Thank keep it simple. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we'll be we'll probably be laughing shortly. At, after the next question. Thank you, Skyler. Yeah, I like that that short shirt skit. That was funny. Um, and there's a question by chat that wants to remain anonymous. That um, uh, 
one more chance if you don't want to be anonymous. Uh, so I will just go ahead and read it. Okay. Um, oops, it is. Uh, can you ask Paul? I know I am not the mind, but I still get sucked in. Then I remember it's a back and forth. Does this ever end? until eventually there is a stabilization. Uh, well, you won't be there to enjoy it, so. The stabilization, the stabilization in you uh, never can join. <laughs> because uh, you are the, you are the agitation of what is obviously very stable. That's the thing. That's the situation, really. So, uh, that which thinks it knows I'm not mind is also an aspect of the mind we're speaking about as other than us, yeah? Yeah. In other words, let's say we, we have a sense of what we're not that we've seen. We don't realize it's not the seeing of what you're not, it's the claiming that implies what you're not. So the claiming has occurred uh, with the observing of what you're not. So now that observing is also what you're not, yes? This is the thief policeman syndrome. So you can't, you catching the thief, you're not catching the crime syndicate because the police and the thief are in cahoots. There are two aspects of the imaginary idea of self. So it has an impact when you catch both. When you catch one, it just reinforces the other. Yeah. But if you see both, that has an impact. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's. Okay. Uh... Do you see that? Do you see it? It's very simple. Most of us, and see, most of us, when it comes to this idea of self, are being represented by a subject-object slinky type move, yeah? So that which was seemingly the subject has now been objectified. We call it self, and we, we got a beat on it. We're looking at it. I want some of its traits. I'm keeping an eye out on it, yeah? Unbeknownst to us, that which is assumed to be keeping an eye on it is an aspect of selfing, yeah? So you remember, this is a negation of two. So it's not a negation of the thief and a reinforcement of the policeman, it's a negation of the two. The thief and that which is observing the thief is, is also negated, yes? Yeah. So let's say like if you're a, let's say you've had a life of addiction and then you wash up on the shores of recovery and then what you were listening to as you and stuff starts getting objectified by the understanding and by the, what you're hearing about it. And then you start seeing, oh, that's what defeated me, let's say, yeah? So I got it, I know what it is. It's called self or ego, whatever. They're two different feelings to me. Selfing is different than ego. Terribly. But let's just use it. So now, now we've objectified that which we used to call ourselves. And we've got wiser. And now it's not going to jackpot us as much as it used to. Yeah, but we don't realize the claiming has migrated to the observing of the object of self is still selfing. You have to see it or, you, or you'll be looking from one or the other. Yeah, you'll be looking from the thief or the policeman. It's neither. Yeah. Yeah. And to know that you're not mine doesn't go anywhere. Really, it doesn't. It's a, it's a starting point in a sense. In other words, you're trying to pull the message through the mental mail slot, so you got a little corner of it, and oh yes, I know I'm not mine, with the hopes that you'll, the message will be pulled in. You don't have to do that. Just 
the spiritual subpoena is calling what's already there to court, yeah? So that it's not going to, it's going to be a witness that's going to null and void all your transgressions and all your sins. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's of what you are. So that's what's being called to court. You're always called to the mental court and you've been convicted there a long time ago. <laughs> You're just living out a sentence, hoping for probation. <laughs> but this is a different subpoena. It's to what we are. And what we are is going to bring an acceptance concerning the topic of what we're not, which is unbelievable. Because I'll tell you, what you're not is going to seem to be around wherever you are until you die. So it's uh, it's best held in a in a form of acceptance that you and I, as what we're not, can, can't come up with. Yeah, It has to be brought into this situation. It can't be produced by the situation. So the acceptance comes from, I'm not that, and then, then suddenly that which you saw as an urban renewal project constantly going over and changing or having to change or punishing because it didn't change, an acceptance comes in and, you know, you accept the Toyota for being a Toyota, you know? Yeah, it's, it's just a lot. Uh, yeah. See, so the acceptance is, is brought to the Toyota. It doesn't come from the Toyota. It's brought to the Toyota. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, there's a whole lot of you that's not captured on this little pinpoint of self-centeredness. Yeah. Just because the interpret the narration of our day seems to have the greatest you know bandwidth, there's millions and millions of other stations you know, <laughs> downloading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just can't see when you're tuned into self this, You can't really tune into anything else. It all gets translated into the bandwidth of self centeredness So you don't really get anything in and of itself. You get it, you get it as you can understand it. That's why it's, it always, it's always neutering the messages it's seeking so hard to arrive at. Yeah. Yeah. It gives meaning to things. That's what we do. It's not like something you've chosen to do. It's what we do. So the mental state has given a meaning to the hearing of the message to imply you're the hearer of the message. So the message, you're a lion, doesn't get to the lion. It gets waylaid by the sheep programming. So it's much more important to talk about the sheep programming to the lion instead of talking to the lion about the lion because it gets it doesn't get through to the lion. It gets caught by the sheep programming. Yeah? You see? It's... you. You arrive at what you are by seeing what you're not. And then you realize there was no arrival necessary. You've never left what you are. It, it's by looking for what you are from what you're not. It's totally premised on the idea that you left it, obviously. Yeah? That somehow you've separated from the, the allness and you should be fucking punished, really, in a lot of ways. Who the fuck would separate from the Godhead? I mean, but in fact, none of it happened, nor will it ever happen, nor, you know, or that it is happening. It never, none, yeah? You don't talk to yourself like that. You find out about it, yeah. I don't say to myself, none of this is happening. <laughs> I just see that none of this is, ha that all of this is happening. Yeah, but none of it's happening to me. That's the good news. And when it happens to me, I'm not that me. Because trying to make it not seem like it's happening to you as a you does not work. You just see you're not the you that fervently believes everything is happening to it. That's all. You don't change the narration or the interpretation. You just lose interest in it. Yeah, because it's not about you. You know, it's like, it's like trying to, you know, go on a three-week retreat about free will. 
And that Ramana Maharshi has the, one of the greatest answers. He says, if there's a sense of individuality, it comes along with the sense of free will. That's it, yeah? So you and I are feeling like we chose a mocha instead of a latte today, yeah? Do you want to really try to go into that programming and change it? Why? Just realize it's not you, yeah? You know, I could, oh, I totally got that. There's no free will. And then I go and I, I'm thinking I want a latte. Then I go, I'll get a mocha. I just fucking blew my giant re- revelation. I feel like I chose the mocha, yeah? You're going to feel like it all the time. But you're not that. See, that's the, that's the message. The message isn't, oh, none of this is happening. No, the message is everything is happening. But none of it's happening to you. Yeah. That's a quite different, it's a different message completely. Yeah. I've got to stop thinking. Well, tell me when you started and then maybe you could stop, but I don't see you ever starting thinking. Have you? Did I decide uh, Thursday, I'm going to start thinking around 830. (laughs) <laughs> there's a huge assumption that I have some power where I have no power. Yeah. I can't wait for the day I stop thinking. Well, hallelujah, because you never started. <laughs> so if you never started, that's a stopping, isn't it? So there you go. Hallelujah. <laughs> This is just seeing you're not the thinker because you've never seen the thinker. You think you see the thinker by looking at the, this image, but that's just made, that's manufactured, yeah? This image has nothing to do with the seeing whatsoever, yeah? But somehow we put it like, all right, I feel like I saw everything from here, so this must be the seeing, yeah? Yeah. That's the mental logic. That's insane if you see it from outside of the mental logic. When you're in the mental logic, it makes complete sense. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, let's go to the next. uh... Okay. And then she, I mean, they did reply. uh, Thank you, exclamation point in chat. James, usually I just this... thank you with a lot of question marks. What? I usually get thank you with a oh. lot of question marks. <laughs> thank you for the exclamation point. That's very nice. <laughs> uh, and, and now James Lebowski. <laughs> no Lebowski. James Lebowski. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks for no thing. <laughs> um. <clears throat> You kind of voided the value of what I was going to ask. Um, and I've been listening to you enough to know that that there it, that there probably wasn't a lot of value. In the, it, it's not. It won't be the first time I've asked a dumb question. Let's put it that way. But you, um, because I, I do often just get caught up in a bunch of detail, and then I realize that's all it is, and I travel lighter. You know, I've gotten a lot out of just the simplicity of your message and not getting too caught up in this versus that type of stuff. But you did say something I thought was really uh, interesting and I wanted to go ahead and risk sounding stupid by asking what is the uh, difference between selfing and the ego? Is selfing just an aspect of the ego or? No, no. first of all, there isn't an ego. Okay. Would there be sizes? Do I have a size 10 ego, size seven ego? No, the ego isn't an idea, isn't it? Well, I've been attending these talks where they talk about Ramana Maharshi a lot. And he says that supposedly, I'm not an authority, but that the ego wakes up every day. that, that, That that was his, and and it says the first thing it says is I. Yeah, yeah, that's the selfing. Yeah. Yeah, and then it and then I I feel this or I that whatever, and it no, starts. I'm talking about the ego, he uses it in a different terminology. I'm talking about like the psychology. 
Okay. Well, that's, that's what I just, you, I did it like one of those dog head turns. Like I, I thought I'd. <laughs> yeah, because. I, <laughs> I thought you'd proctologize that for me already. <laughs> listen to this statement. Some people, you know, they believe they have an ego. Yeah. And then they believe they've lost an ego. What is that feeling of being the one who had and lost the ego? That's the selfing. Yeah. Which, yeah, which is the presence of an ego, right? Because, or the idea of an ego. <laughs> yes, but see, now the... It's if you the, think you dissolved it... The thing that you can have and lose, yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's sort the, of like a tumor or something. I it's have right a, up there with the present moment. <laughs> hmm? It's right up there with the present moment. Like, yeah, you think you can be out of it or in it? I don't like the, uh, I don't like the term, really into the psychology thing. Yeah, Cause that's why I ask, because I've heard you sort of say that you just don't even think the ego is a valid concept. or The, the ego sounds like a thing, it's just like self sounds like a thing, but it's truly self-thing. There's no self. I use the word self because it's used in recovery, and I'm from there. But it's not really the particular way I see it. Selfing is what we're speaking of here, which is a combination of a lot of mental activities, implying, assuming, reinforcing the idea of being the one or being the doer, yeah, being the thinker, being the seer, taster, toucher. That sense of being the proprietor or the owner or the doer of stuff that it has nothing to do with, that's all derived and reinforced through selfing. Yeah. So if they would say egoing, I would be more interested in the term than ego. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, thanks for entertaining that question, Paul. I appreciate it always. Uh, it's always good to see you, James. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, James. Nico. Nico. Hi, Paul. Hey, bro. How are you? Okay, okay, it's here. It's uh, four in the morning or five wow. now. Yeah, I woke up early for you. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the the we then we could say like uh, what we really uh, what we really are no can be something only as what we are not. Yes, well, that's how we get a sense of what we are, is by seeing what we're not, yeah. No, but the phenomena of being something is being something that you're not. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. See, to me, so, because, because we are that, you can't have an experience of it. You can't know it, yeah? You can't have it or lose it because you are it. It's a whole different ball game. But in a weird way, the seeing of what you had been taking yourself to be or implied, yeah? Seeing enough of that as not you almost gives you a sense of what you are, yeah? Yeah? Yeah, so, so actually, yeah, actually, bottom line, you cannot have the real experience of what you are. No, no, I don't see it. No, because you are it. That's the whole point. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, so, we, so we, it, it, it's a lost cause. I mean, it's it's a lost it's a lost cause. No, I mean it's. Uh, yes. It's uh, okay. Okay. That's how, that's Thank how you. it serves us, Nico. When we see that it's a lost cause, that's its, it's success. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's not in in a d depressing way, but it's it's a lost cause. I mean, it, yes, and that's like great news. See, if you heard it from a different point, a lost cause would be a bummer, you know. But if you hear it in another, if you hear it in another light, let's say it's like hallelujah. Yeah, I finally yeah. realized this is a lost cause. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? how liberating that is, really. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't come up for debate every few months. 
I mean, I feel like you're convinced of the message. You're convinced of the futility of using what you're not to try to find what you are. You just, you're completely convinced of it, yeah? It's like a done deal. And there's a moving on, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I don't go to a, every six months have a review or a debate on it. It's just a fact, yeah? Yeah. And a fact that's really a fact is a good combination. See, we're making a lot of shit facts that aren't. But when you put that ability to make shit a fact to a fact, that's got some good juice, yeah? That's what can, I love can, about the message of non-duality. It's a, it's a very novel idea because it's not saying you can become this. It's saying you are it, yeah? Now with no requirement or effort on your part to make that so. It's such a beautiful disarming message if it's heard in a certain way. Yeah. And then it just, it reviews your life and you see the same, like all the historical data, but you see it in a whole new light and a whole new message comes out of it. Yeah. Which doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like a call to arms, it's a disarming. You've realized the pointlessness of trying to look for what you already are, you know? It's just, and just, it's sort of like putting a bed at a roulette table, yeah? Like squared, a black 38, and every time that roulette thing is spun, you keep the same bed. You never take, you never take the, the thing off of black 38. It doesn't matter all the different spins that's that's the bet yeah it's so beautiful to me i call it in time the last answer which is an incredible answer because it takes the it takes away any need for any more answers concerning this idea of being because you are <laughs> the being you don't arrive at the being by a certain by it by it looking a certain way. It's just a fact of being, yeah? Yeah? It basically could wear whatever it fucking wants to wear or not wear whatever it fucking wants, doesn't want to wear, yeah? There's no protocol, it just is, yeah. I think, I don't know, it's quite, uh, quite liberating. All right, Nico. Thank you, Paul. Take it, go, go to sleep now. You can rest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, yeah. I'm always happy to see you, Nico. I hope someday I run into you in a live. Yeah. It would be nice, yeah? It would be yes. really nice. Yes. All right, my friend. You never know. I go over, yeah. It, it won't be hard to go to Croatia sometime. Yeah, yeah, we can be, we can make a community here. You know? Yeah, well, I have, some, I have some friends that are from Croatia. One of them's here I know, now. I know. Yeah, Z. Yeah. yeah, so I, I'm, uh, I'm fond of the Croatians. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. They're up there with my Portuguese Zen bitch slappers. Those are nice too. <laughs> and then I got my. Brisbane and the Melbourne, my Melbourne friends, and yes, yeah. All right, bro, I'll see you. See you, bye-bye. Thanks, Nico. Sagar is up. Sagar. Hey, Paul, how are you? I know I keep, uh, how you keep do? listening to your messages, but um, um, can you elaborate a little bit more about the policeman? Because I think Somewhere the policeman is always active and I've been really bothered by it lately. So just yeah. thought of. Right. Well, you know, they come in, they come in twos. Yeah. So yeah. truly there is no thief without the policeman and there's no policeman without the thief. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the other, it's almost like uh, the modality of subject object once again. Yeah, something that was a subject now has been objectified, and that would be the thief, yeah. Now, you don't capture it just by objectifying it because it's duality, yes? So its appearance is of subject and object. So 
the appearance that you're missing maybe is the subjective appearance as the policeman. So you're now, it's now, the, the policeman is now taking the role to police the thief where they're both in cahoots. <laughs> <laughs> which comprises the robbery called the bondage of self. <laughs> yeah. But why is there a sense like when, when reality hits me quite a bit, like maybe two times a week, sometimes it, it, it looks like, oh my God, what I was doing. Stop for a second. It, you just came to mind. Now I remember you. Very nice. <laughs> Yes, we had a lot of chat when you came to Toronto. Oh, good. Yes. Good. Yes. So, so I don't know. There was for years. I, the policeman and thief both were gone. Yes. I don't know from where they have appeared in the last year. <laughs> well, it's not of you. Let's just rem remember that maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The mental state yeah. is primarily rooted in a dualistic format, yes? Mm -hmm. There's no object that stands alone. It needs a subject, and there's no subject without an object, in a sense. Yes? So basically, maybe you were, the not you, but the attention and interest was sufficiently moved out of that for a while, but it was still going on. Now your interest and attention is back in the neighborhood, so it's becoming conscious of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Uh, yeah, so, it has become quite active. In the last six months, it has become so active that it literally makes it. Um, and uh, when it's seen clearly, it's like, oh my God, how did it happen? Well, you don't, don't, I wouldn't go there because it okay. didn't. It's appearing to have happened or it's appearing to happen, but it never did happen. Yes. You can't give it enough credit. That's why I don't like the word self, because it sounds like it's already uh, won by being called a thing. So I call it selfing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's an activity. So duality on the subject object level where we're seemingly it's almost like a, it's like a slinky almost. Yes. There's the subject and the object, subject, object. You're thinking they're different, but they're the same coil. Yeah. The same coil of agitation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be fooled. The director of the circus and the, all the characters are the, are, are the same. Well, aren't they? Yeah, well, yeah. You, they just, they just, they're appearing. Yeah. When they appear, they come along with a, a preformed reaction. I'm that. Yeah. Oh, I'm the one or whatever. I'm the one who wants it to stabilize. Yeah. But you don't realize you're not that I that wants it to stabilize. Because that I is agitation. How is it going to, if it meets stabilization, it agitates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It's, hey, it's so happy. subtle and so yeah. crazy. It's happy to see you, Sega. Yeah, it is. It is, Paul. It's amazing I mean, to see you. Conversations. That's good. Yes. Yes. I'm always. You're I a trip. You can... Yeah, man. I want to meet you, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto has more strict uh, lockdown, but I would definitely love to meet you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll get together again. Yeah. 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 All right, bro. I'm going to take off to another one. Sure. Sure. Thanks, Paul. Nice to see you again, yeah. Nice to see you always. It took me a minute to realize who it was. If I would have realized <laughs> you, I would have blackened your square, so forgotten you. <laughs> you got in. Yeah, uh, no, I, I can't forget you ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Mike, what's happening here with Thank Seattle? You. There's more people in Seattle now with Jacob. <laughs> the cult is growing. 
<laughs> if you get two more members, I'll send you a free T-shirt. <laughs> All right. Who's uh, who's next, Mike? Uh, Reverend Laurie Nevin. Reverend Reverend Laurie Nevin. That's a mouthful. Reverend Laurie Nevin. Just call me Rev Nev. <laughs> it's whatever. It's just a it's a title, right? It's just a title, just like my shirt. <laughs> um, I like it. Yes, Paul. I I'm happy to see you. It's been a few years. We we saw you in Guelph. Um, you've been to oh, Guelph yeah, a few yeah. times. Thank you, thank you for coming up to Canada. Uh, Cigar, I guess, is from Toronto, and um, and I'm uh, thank you for coming up to Canada. Uh, love your new website. Gotta tell you, I'm practically on it every day listening to the music. <laughs> oh, I great. just yeah, love yeah, your website. Yeah, oh, we had fantastic. a bunch of week in that, yeah. Fantastic. Um, so I'm, I'm someone who comes from A Course in Miracles uh, background, and, um, and, you know, it often says that uh, a guiltless mind does not suffer. And so I'm wondering if the selfing is perpetuated by, a, by the juice guilt. And, um, and when I see the word ego, that's what I place the G as, is the guilt. Um, you know, yes. because it sort of keeps you from, from identifying with what you are if you feel guilty that you've left what you are, you know? Yes, it's a I tricky little wonder- maneuver. But it's all, it's all based on a false assumption that you left exactly. what you are. Yes? Oh, yes. Yeah. So ultimately, or let's say now, <laughs> that's good to see. Yeah. See, there's no, there's the, uh, obviously there's an assumption that we're in separation, just like, there's when selfing is doing its little number, you know, you're not feeling like you're becoming a self. You think you already are one the same way with the guilt. So the guilt uh, is an idea that arises when there's a belief in separation. And then, yes. So then the, the guilt reinforces the separation, the separation reinforces the guilt and so on and so forth. But, you could see that as a dualistic movement. Yeah. So the whole idea, this is, you know, the idea I had with the course, it's a very nice description of all of the underlying causes and conditions of the whole dreaming. Yeah. We're trying to put on a better face and for us to feel innocent, we have to have a lot of perpetrators who are seemingly worse than us. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't do anything really it doesn't really do anything it's like you know when you mentally feel better it usually leads to a deep emptiness yeah if you become an addict if you get addicted to mentally feeling better it's really an addiction you have to keep mentally feeling better and because there's a giant hole of emptiness there so, yeah. yeah. So yes, the selfing and the guilt and the guilt and the selfing are two peas in the same pod. Yeah. 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 No, I love the description of the course. I uh, I like the idea of dreaming. It's the best the best description I've had. I've heard about what's happening here. Not that we're in a dream or there is a dream, but I don't like the word dream because it sounds like a thing, but I like it in its verbing, which is dreaming. So I, I'm a real believer of the diagnostic of you and I are the dreaming of the dream. We forget that we're dreaming. <clears throat> and when we do, uh, we give everything we're dreaming the power to affect us. That's what this whole place is, yes? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Attack thoughts or attacking our invulner- <clears throat> invulnerability. Yes. And then there's the proving of that all day. And one of the greatest ways it proves itself is pain, physical pain. Yes. Yeah. 
people give up a lot of reality about a lot of things on a mental level. It's very difficult to give up the reality of pain. I'm feeling pain. That must be real. Yes. So, but you have to realize that which is saying it's feeling the pain isn't real. Yeah. That's where the suffering lies. Yeah. The identification. Hmm? The identification, like putting, putting my pain. If you yes, know, definitely. You put... The act of being identified See, it's an activity, but the assumption of what we're identified with is presented as historical. See, we're, we're, we're in the act of being identified with that which we, is the only thing we can identify as. Yeah, it's a trip. See, people don't get the feeling, well, I don't know, hopefully they do. Time is like a very incredible, uh, influence yeah you can change how things look just adding a little time into it yeah so if you see like ramana maharshi puts it there's a presupposing or an assuming a pre-assuming that this non-existent thing is existing really yeah and then wanting to get salvation for that non-existent thing if that's the case then your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. How can they destroy it? That's a statement with a question and best to sit with it. Yeah. Because this is sort of like coming into a spiritual shoe store. You try on some of the shoes. If they fit, wear them for a while and see what happens. Yeah. So people, if they don't, see the first part of that statement will fucking fight you with great venom that their spiritual practices have a huge amount of fucking value. But they're not seeing the first aspect, which is there's this idea that you're something that you're not, and you're trying to get salvation as that for that. Therefore, whatever it's claiming to be doing is reinforcing the false doer. How can they relieve it? Yeah? yeah exactly. It's meant You're to see, saying. it's not, you just see if that, to me, it was a, it was a conclusion that it took years seemingly to arrive at. But when I arrived there, it explained everything I'd been doing for years. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate that so much. You know, it's, this has been a part of Lori's, you know, the mythical Lori's uh, story is, is the, you know, one spiritual practice after another, a bit of an addict, uh, really. And uh, yeah, I've come to that conclusion myself this past year. If anything, that's been the blessing of the pandemic for me is that I've, I've hit a wall. And, uh, oh, yeah. Been, yeah. The thing is, when the seeking stops, that's when the Course of Miracles catches up to you. <laughs> when you stop trying to use it to get somewhere, it'll take yeah. you somewhere. Now it's, yeah, totally, yeah. totally changed. Totally changed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good, I good. I can't hear it any other way now. <laughs> oh, good. Good. So, so, but thank you. you. You've been part of uh, my journey as well. And I love every book. I, I think I, I, we've got every book. And um, it just, um, it's just, it's very refreshing to have it because it's, you're, you're using words, you know, to bring someone to a wordless recognition. It's, um, it's powerful to have that ability. So, so thank you. Well, it's not mine. And what better use of words what better use of words than to bring you to a wordless condition? That's what that <laughs> point. <laughs> that's it. That's their function, really. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks. Nice to see you, Rev, and your uh, and your uh, acolyte next to you. Nice to see both of you. This is Jeff. I don't know. Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Jeff. <laughs>
Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Paul. Nice to see you, Rev. Yeah. Thank you. No more hand. No more hands up. Well, that's good. Maybe we'll end on there, eh? Did we start at seven or seven thirty? Seven. Seven. All right. Yeah, that's more than enough. Let me say goodbye to everybody. Mike. Hey, we're going to try to get together sooner or later. So with Keith, yeah, mm -hmm. he's going away. S Judith, my, my, uh, yes. Judith is the, the backbone of Zen Bitch Slap. Oh, I love you so much, Paul. Oh, your words are amazing. Yes, yes. I'm not getting, the action figure's not getting any of it. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> but the reverberation is tremendous. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank You're you. You're up to something. Oh, it's a yeah. whole new, different world out here. Oh, great. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Yeah. Oh. I'm always thanking it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Mike. Nice to see you, Mike C. Over there. We got Robert from uh, New Zealand. Always a pleasure, Robert. Hi, I remember you from the first time you showed up. Very, I remember uh, you too. I remember nice you to too. Nice to have you, Robert. Yeah. We got John K. as always. Yep. Always nice to see you, John K. Yeah. We got Thank Karen you. down there. Nice to see you, Karen. Yep. Yep. We got the Rev and uh, what's his name? Phil? Jeff. I lost you, whatever. We got Z. Z's my main uh, Yugoslavian slash Croatian slash Belmarin Keys. C is Z. Yeah. Jacob and the gang, nice to see you all in Seattle. Yeah, we got five here now. Oh, you have five here. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, I Bella. It's fashion. Oh, <laughs> you kept the best for last. There she is. How are you, honey? <laughs> well, fantastic, Jacob. Thanks. Always a pleasure to see you. And now for others. We got Kenneth and another Torontoan. Yes, we got Guelph, Toronto, Toronto. We got Harvey, nice to see you or not see you, Harvey. Anthony, Napolitano, Anthony, nice to see you. Tony, yes, <laughs> Tony Napolitano. I got arrested with a lot of Tonys, yeah, in my upbringing. <laughs> we got Gary C. Gary, thank hey, you for Paul. all the support, Gary. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. She says hi. What, oh, thank you. Yeah, say hello to her. Hopefully we'll be coming up there again. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. We got Stefan. Nice to see you, Stefan. Pleasure to have you uh your presence here. Donna, Donna, you're looking pretty comfortable. Yep. Yeah. So a nice way of receiving the message, laying down. Yeah. All right. We got uh, RVC, my homeboy. Nice to see you, RVC. Rockville Senna. The tales we could tell about Rockville Senna. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mary G. Nice to see you, honey. Yeah. Yep. Johannes. Nice. From Germany. Always a pleasure. Uh, we got Ty from Melbourne. Nice to see you, Ty. Say hello to all the folks there, Jane and everyone. Keith, Keith, call me up tomorrow morning, eh? I think he's asleep. Let him sleep. We got Brahmi. Brahmi, nice to see you, honey. Nice to see you. Very nice, yeah. We got Jessica, Jessica F. Nice to meet you, Jessica. Yeah. I hope to see you again soon or later. We got, let me see, we got EU, I can't read, it's Latvica, something. Nice to see you, yes, yes. <laughs> and we got 
Sundara Bavi. She's in the dark, but I can see something moving. Nice that's to see. Jack. What? That's Jack. G. Oh, that's Jack. That's his new name. Oh, he's in a he's in a vehicle again. I had to change my name, Paul. Oh, you did. Oh, Sundara Brava. All right. Sundara Bava, yeah. All right. All right. I'll try to remember that. We got Sanda, another gal from the Indian, the India, the continent of India. Yes, Mom, nice to see you, honey. Yeah, wait for mom and greetings from here. Oh, uh, there's the mountain. Yes, that's where Ramana Maharshi lived. Yeah. I always say it wrong. Arunchala. Arunachala, yes. Yeah. Oh, Arunchala, yeah. We got uh, Sega. Crazy mofo from Toronto also. JP, just call me in the morning sometime, yes? If you have 15 hours, call me at 8 in the morning. That'll be 10 o'clock at night. Zoom or call me, WhatsApp. Mike has my information, all right? All right, yeah. Drew from Wisconsin, wow. I like that outfit, Drew. What do you... uh? You're hiking at night? <laughs> Home construction, <laughs> Paul. Oh, construction. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, farmhouse bombed out. Wow. Keep coming back, Paul. All right. <laughs> 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 I can't help myself. Yeah. Uh -huh. Skyla, such, such a happy face. Nice to meet you, Skyla. <laughs> Likewise. We'll see you again sooner or later. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's James, the big Lebowski. Nice to see you, James. Don't be a stranger. Ross, we got John R. Yeah, John, I'm going to send you, uh, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give your information to Julia, this lady who's running it, that uh, that conference. Yeah, I'm going to announce it actually okay, now. Great, you know, in February, we're going to do a virtual retreat. I swore I'd never do a retreat, but technically I never said virtual retreat. So we're going to do a two day thing, three talks each day and then a lot of whatever. And it's, but it's a hundred bucks because this group gets paid and then they pay me. So the information's on the website. It's going to be, I think, February 20th and 20th first which is a saturday and sunday and we won't have the saturday meeting that week there all right so but the information is on the website so all right let's see who else we got we got these folks maggie we got rich a bernard if i miss anyone joseph's phone nice to see you joseph amelia the love of my life mm -hmm. amelia mm -hmm. Julie, Nancy, uh, I, I'm missing some more things. But hey, you all know. Thank you, everyone. See you later. Thank you so much, right, Paul. You are yeah. yeah. the thing Such, that. Thank you, Paul. You were the best Thanks, thing everybody. that this pandemic could have brought. We all get to have you in our living yes. room. Yes. This is yeah. just yes. amazing. Thank you so much. What she said. This would have never happened unless the freaking pandemic happened. Oh, dear God, Paul. Yeah. What would my life be without yes, having yes. met you and be part of listening to you and you talking to me? This is just most beautiful. Thank you. Well, that's a nice note to end on. Oh. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.